Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor in yet another video podcast. I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the podcast, guys, I'm going to be answering the question, does an aircraft have a horn? Why there is still a no smoking sign in the uh, cabin and also here in the cockpit because we actually have it up here. Stay tuned. Right guys, so I am making this quite short video in response to some of the questions that got me into the channel and take this as proof of I am actually reading all of your comments so when you're sending in a question to me I take it fully seriously and I will try to explain it if I see that enough people are interested in knowing the answer. Okay, today's question is does an aircraft have a horn and in that case how is it used? Well. The, the, the straight and short answer to the question is no. We do not have an actual horn uh, for the simple reason that as we're flying along, no one would actually hear it, okay? But we do have something slightly, well, similar that, that we do use, okay? And that is something that is located up here called ground call, okay? If I press this button up here, it will send the signal out down from the nose wheel well bay that is there to decide, it is designed from, in order to grab the attention of the ground crew. So if I want something from the ground crew, let's say for example that I've gotten some new information and I cannot reach them over the operational frequency, or there's something urgent and I need to show them that there's something dangerous for example that they need to clear out, well then I'll press this and it sounds like this, okay? Okay, that's the, that's the sound of it. That is essentially what we have. and. It is a fairly strong signal, okay? Unless the engines are running, uh, you can hear it far and wide on the airport and it will grab the attention of everyone around me because of the, the way that the signal is designed. But I have actually been in situations where I've used it as a horn, as a clacton. Uh, and that is essentially when you're taxiing along and let's say that there is a big flock of seagulls sitting on the, uh, on the taxiway. There has been instances where I have actually been using that effectively in order to get the seagulls to fly away before we get too close and run risk of sucking them into the engines or hitting them. Obviously it is not usable during the takeoff roll or the landing roll or anything like that. In that case we're just focusing on getting the aircraft down or up safely. But on a taxiway it can actually be used in that fashion. Not many people, I haven't seen much other people do it but I've seen it to be quite effective. So the answer to the question, which was, does uh, an aircraft have a horn, a clacton? The answer is no, but we have something that we can use in order to grab the attention of people around us. Right, another question that I have been receiving quite a lot on the channel is why there is still a no smoking sign in the uh, cabin and also here in the cockpit, because we actually have it up here. Now, um, the reason for that is, first of all, the no smoking sign in the, uh, in the cabin kind of makes sense because you have to constantly remind people that they're not allowed to smoke. Even if it's obvious for most people, especially you guys watching the channel, it is not obvious for all people from all cultures. So all aircraft have that. It does not turn off, okay? It is always on. There's no possibility for us to turn it off. So that's why it's in the cabin, okay? But then you might ask yourself, if there's no possibility to turn it off, why is there a button up here then? Well, that is a better question, okay. Uh, and it goes a little bit back to, uh, to regulation, actually. Um, the, uh, when it comes to a, a type, like the Boeing 737, for example, there's only so many things that you are allowed to change inside of a cockpit before you actually require a new type rating, okay. So the cockpit has to, they have to change only a minimal amount of stuff tends to be the screens and some minor buttons and so on, but they're not allowed to, to change too much of it because if a big enough percentage of all of the buttons and the layout is changed, well then a new type rating is needed. So most of these buttons, they're actually, you can see some cutouts and stuff that are left in these new, like here for example, they used to be dials. Uh, there are no dials anymore, but the cutouts are still there. So they stay as similar as possible in order to avoid uh, regulatory authorities to start messing with the type rating. All right, that's one reason. 
Also, this button, we actually do have, we do use that for a purpose. Now, this is company derived, so different companies will have different procedures for this, but we need to have some kind of memory device for certain things. And one of those things tends to be whether or not the cabin crew are ready with what they're doing. So they give us signals when they are, for example, ready to push back. Okay, because we don't know. We've, as soon as all the passengers are on board, we close the doors, we also lock the cockpit door. But we need to know if the cabin crew is ready, everyone is sitting down and the security checks are complete before we can start moving the aircraft to make sure people are not falling down. And what we do then is that they give us a signal from outside that they're ready to move and we move the uh, no smoking sign to the middle position. That is a memory device triggering us to know that, okay, when we get to that point in the checklist, which is called uh, passengers, the last point before we start pushing back, uh, or sorry, before we can start setting up for pushback, then we look up and say, did we get that signal lock? Yeah, yeah, yes, we did. And so it's basically used as a memory device. The next we are going to get is once we're pushed back and we're taxiing out with the aircraft, and we're doing our light checks, they are also doing their checks. And when they've done their checks and they're ready for takeoff, they are going to get us another signal. Now that signal is going to indicate that we can now take off from the cab uh, cabin side. And we then put the smoking sign completely on. So that's another memory trigger to make sure that we've gotten cabin secure for takeoff. After takeoff, when, we've, uh, when we're up, we turn that off, okay? And next time it's going to be used is when we get cabin secure for landing, in which case we put it back on again, all right? So that way we also know for landing that we receive cabin secure. Now you might ask yourself, why would you need memory device for this? And the thing is, we are in a fairly high workflow situation, both before we're pushing back and before we're landing. So even though we, at the moment, when we hear the signal, clearly remember it, it might have disappeared when it's time for us in the checklist to verify it. And by having a memory device, we can both look up and say, yeah, we did get that signal, that's fine. Rather than having to, well, I'm not really sure, let's call them up and see. So we're using some small devices like that, some small tricks to help us in our daily work. That's one of the reasons why we still have that button available in the cockpit, which is something I guess that you guys did not know. I hope that made sense to you guys. I know this was a very short podcast, uh, but keep sending me questions. I will do these little specials whenever I have a little bit of extra time in the cockpit, which I tended to have today. So make sure you've subscribed to the channel, make sure that you tell all of your friends who are interested in aviation about the channel, highlight the, uh, the little notification bell so you get to know whenever I do live streams, because I love doing the live stream for you guys, and have a fantastic day wherever you are, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.